Hey guys, brand new week to you. Well, here we are. Did you get a chance to listen to yesterday's audio, which was quite emotional? I'm not sure if you noticed the word asshole mentioned by Abe near the end of the audio. Oh man, that was like really funny. In today's audio, I believe this uh, young European man is asking an important question. Please listen and leave comment because we all have these voices in our head and how to fine tune it. All right, uh, well, thank you very much. Like I always say, that it's always best if you listen to all my audios with earphones or headphones to get the most out of it. All right, wishing you an awesome week and day. Enjoy and chill. I, I dreamed about it. Well, <laughs> what now? Uh, I came a long way here, from far away. <laughs> and what I wanted mostly to ask about is for my age, young, I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anyone, <laughs> but I feel I have so strong desire in me, so, so many dreams, yeah. and my most important desire is to feel good. Yeah. That is what matters to me. Yeah. And when I was traveling here, I traveled alone for the first time and I beat myself up so, so much. And it was when, I, when the dream was born to ask you, this voice in my head that says, you're not worthy, you're unworthy, you don't deserve it. This is just a fake on your mind. And I wanted to ask you, how to improve on that and how to let myself be me because no. my friends and around me they don't believe in this, this stuff and I'm kind of the only one to do it uh, I kind of feel like in my surroundings I'm the only one to practice deliberate creation well let's start with something that really matters a lot because you've said something so important and this is going to be such a wonderful important conversation for a lot of others too you said the voice in my head all right now usually when someone talks about the voice in their head they mean some important voice some voice outside of me some important voice that is saying to me you are not worthy but we want you to understand and everything that we talked about before you came to visit with us here is about this most important point right now the voice in Esther's head is Abraham because she's tuned to it she's practiced tuning to it she can tune to it easily just because of the frequency the amount of times that she's done it and so Esther has no confusion about the voice in her head but the voice in your head just stay with us a little bit let's flesh this out we're not speaking the words to Esther that she is delivering to you so she's not hearing words and repeating them it's all a translation thing that's going on and your head is the translator so when you say the voice in my head that's like saying the remote control in my hand that's pointed at the television the remote control showed me tragedy the remote control showed me beauty well that remote control is schizophrenic <laughs> your head can tune to who you really are and what you really know or it can tune to the story that others have told about themselves that you've superimposed over yourself we can feel there's no one who's been hard after you during your life no one has made you insecure but you have been because you're a teacher to the core of your being you have been an avid student of life so you're watching lots and lots of things but like most people as we were saying earlier what you're watching are the manifestations that are being produced by people without really understanding the underlying vibrational combining Esther was talking to a friend recently and she was talking about the difference between the mix of vibrations when she's talking to this one person 
And then when that person enters, the mix changes. And when those people enter, then the mix changes still. So that there's a constant changing mix of vibrational frequencies and behaviors that you are often responding to. And over time, you begin to mimic a lot of that and call it the voice in your head. So recently, we began talking about being under the influence. Under the influence of what? Under the influence, tuned in, tapped in, turned on to my broader perspective, my inner being, my source, my Abraham, or being tuned in to the frequencies of what's going on in the political world or the television world, or even what's happening in the neighborhood. In other words, there's a lot going on. And the voice in your head you can't just say the voice in my head without defining the voice in my head after meditation is one voice. The voice in my head in the middle of a bar fight is something quite different. The voice in my head when somebody who doesn't understand the laws of the universe is talking about the injustices of the world. And once I've tuned into that and picked up on that momentum, the voice in my head is different. The first order of business that you want to do is to figure out how to identify and then isolate and then practice until you really own, because you want to, the frequency of the true voice in your head. It's not even a voice in your head. The voice of non-physical that knows all about me and everything that relates to me that is translated through my head. Or the voice in my head that's translated because of insecurities that I've fostered and encouraged myself to allow. In other words, the voice in my head. That'll be the track title of this one, you know. The voice in my head. What is the originator of this voice in my head? What is the vibrational frequency of this voice in my head which has to do with only one thing how I meet me it's what my vibrational frequencies are doing which comes down blessed you to the thing that you know above all else you said it to us already here today what do you care most about and that's why that's why because that's the only way you can understand what voice is in your head right now yeah. So it feels complicated because there's a whole bunch of people out there saying a whole lot of things and they can get in your head. But it isn't complicated when you realize that you've got source energy that is beaming a signal to you all the time. That would be like saying, really, we want you to hear this. We're really going to offer a ridiculous analogy that is so on point. You can't help but get it. And then you can mock us for the simplicity of it. That'd be like tuning the radio in your car and being all flustered because there's one station that you always can count on for flowing, uplifting, lovely music or whatever to you. But you are too discombobulated to even remember what that station is. So you're just all over the place. No, that's not it. 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 And then you come away with an attitude that there's chaos in the world. All I want is alignment and there's chaos in the world. And we say, of course there's chaos in the world. Blessed chaos in the world. Chaos and contrast and variety are all the same thing. It's this plethora of choices that everyone has access to. You just want to tune to the voice in your head. You just want to tune to the frequency of who you really are, of what your vibrational reality is, so that in that tuning, you're the translator of that voice. So you bring clarity from the chaos. Oh, can you feel the difference? To be able to bring clarity from chaos is mastery. To condemn the chaos is foolery. That'd be like saying, I want to create my own reality, but I don't want any choices. I don't want any contrast or any variety from which to choose. I just want it to be what I've already chosen. Just clean it all up and then I'll come and I'll just look around and I'll be happy. That's not what you said. You said, oh, magnificent variety. I'm going to bring clarity to this chaos and I'm going to live happily forever after in the chaos because of the clear way in which I get to view it. 
I'm not going to push against any of the chaos. I'm going to adore it because the worst of the chaos is just going to help me fill my vortex with things more wanted. And the best of the chaos is going to inspire me to more that I can live. <sighs> yeah? Got it. Helpful? Want to talk to us? Can I ask one more? I'm working in a, as an employee right now. In a what? In, as an employee. Um, I've got an employer. And I want to make the transition to be a life coach myself. Yeah. When is the right time? I, 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 I kind of know the answer, but I yeah, just well, wanted you to say it <laughs> to me once more. That's the right answer. <laughs> that answer that you know. Our best way of saying that to you, to confirm your right answer is... It's about confirmation, yeah. Say again? It's about confirmation, yeah. See yourself moving in your current employment, which is a vehicle. And it's doing a good job. You got some good speed going. You're enjoying it. You're good at it. You're appreciated. You are an appreciator, too. Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time. Those are good odds. <laughs> you're more dominantly feeling good than not. So you're moving along in this vehicle and at some point, not quite yet, another vehicle will be right there and you'll look over and it's just gonna look so really good. And it's gonna be moving at so slightly a faster speed than you are that you've got time to make the jump over into the new vehicle. And then off you're going to go. And it's going to be even more pleasing than the last one for a little while. And then you're going to look over. Not because you're dissatisfied over here, but because there's something more satisfying over here. Because your vortex is full of the next vehicle and the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one regarding everything. So you just look over and then you just say, whoa. And then off you go for a little while. And then there's another, and then another, and then another, and then another. More and more and more. You see, perhaps we shouldn't tell any of you this. <laughs> we have to really consider who you are to make sure that if we tell you this, that it will be all right with you because you will be able to understand what we really mean when we say it. We want no misunderstandings about this. All right, you're good. <laughs> In your vortex is what from where you stand now, the supersonic, 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 over the moon, off the charts, incredible, knock your socks off, vehicle of all vehicles. It's in your vortex, but it's not your next vehicle. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> but because you want right now to move to the final vehicle to the one that you really mean but because you're not vibrationally ready for it by wanting to make a bigger jump than you are vibrationally ready to make then you introduce more resistance and then you can't even find the next one or the next one or the next one and then what happens next is then then you start justifying why you want this vehicle by pointing out stuff that's not good with this one it's undependable breaks down uses too much gas doesn't appreciate me as much as it could gives me assignments that I don't really want makes me work longer hours and I don't feel as free as I really want to feel doesn't fulfill my life intention nothing is ever going to fulfill your life intention because your life intentions are going to continue to evolve it's the next and 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 the next, you see. So what did you hear from us? What answer did you get from us that you could speak in far fewer words than we just did? What did we just say to you? That I've been right all along because the jumps of the cars, I already imagined that. You have been right all along, but in terms of should I jump again right now? When you said, I think I know the answer, what's the answer that you thought you knew? Um, I'm quite enjoying my job right now and I want it to flow into my experience and I don't want to jump too early. There you are. There you are. Thank you. Thank you. There you are. Really good. We'll move that out of your way.
கொடுக்கணும்